continuing with Tristan's book, we come today to the subject of vocation. The reading is from Jeremiah chapter 1. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak, I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to, and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Tristan writes about this. For more than five years, I was a director of vocations for an Anglican diocese in Wales. I would often visit congregations to explore what a vocation entails. To many, it brings to mind a person who gives up everything to follow a worthy course. But the root of the word is the Latin vacare, which simply means to call. God, of course, does not only call people who are fantastically talented or terribly worthy. God calls each and every one of us, whoever we are, whatever our background. He calls us to help in, in his work of bringing love, hope and peace to our situations. In today's passage, Jeremiah is only a child. God, though, reassures him that he's not too young, just as we ourselves are never too anything to be called by God, whatever our age or background. When we are thinking about our lives and to what we should commit our time, talents and resources, we might automatically consider what would be good for us and what our own prior priorities are. However, God's calling challenges us, not merely to ask what we want from life, but what life is demanding from, from us. Each one of us has been given gifts from God. Some of these are innate talents, abilities and personal traits, while others we may have worked hard to hone. Either way, we owe it to God to use those gifts wisely. Singing is sadly not one of my talents. Still, I have a secret passion to which I rarely admit. I love karaoke. In fact, I have sung in karaoke bars across the globe, from Berlin to Brisbane. My signature chung song, which I save until the end of the night, after I have already massacred Daydream Believer, Mac the Knife and Hey Jude, is Frank Sinatra's My Way. Each time I croon that hit, though, I always feel rather uncomfortable with the lyrics, which seem to sum up modern life's individualistic attitude. The song criticises the one who kneels and praises those who listen to no one but themselves. As Christians, however, the process should be reversed. We need to be the ones who kneel and the ones who are listening, not to our own desires, but for God's call. God is asking us to consider how we are being called to use our talents and personalities to contribute positively to the circumstances we are facing. How can we use our gifts to bring just a little light to the world around us? What does the environment in which we find ourselves need in order to be made whole? Where do we fit in? Vocation, of course, is a journey that takes each of us on different paths. My own moment of clarity came while sitting in a small chapel in Carmarthen in West Wales. I was a full-time university academic at the time. As I sat in that chapel, I looked up and saw the words, Feed my sheep in a stained glass window. For a moment, I thought I was being called to follow my grandfather into farming. Then it dawned on me that these words were the ones which Jesus spoke to the disciple Peter. Like the disciples 2,000 years ago, I felt the words were being spoken directly to me, challenging me to stand alongside people in their joys and sorrows, encouraging them and offering them God's peace and comfort. This episode led me to give up my lectureship and offer myself a training for ordination. Other people's callings, of course, take them in all sorts of different directions, to teach, to work as nurses or doctors, to serve in a shop to run a business, to be mothers, fathers or grandparents, to be musicians or artists, to take roles in churches such as church wardens or choir members. And of course, we can be called again and again to different tasks and roles. When our youngest son was two years old, he discovered the wonder of lollipops. And as a result, we discovered that sticking a lolly in his mouth would keep our very lively little Kojak quiet for a long time. Being called by God is sometimes like a lollipop, a once and for all experience that can last a long time. My daughter's favourite sweets, on the other hand, are Starburst, or for those of us over 40, Opal Fruits, which disappear much more quickly. Sometimes being called by God is more like enjoying a pack of those. We eat one, then another, and another, and occasionally put more than one in our mouths at the same time. 
We are, after all, given opportunities to follow God's call at many different points in our lives. Some of our vocations are lifelong, others last a season, and then we move on to another calling. And sometimes we are living out different vocations at the same time. Through all this, one thing is certain. The question is never whether God is calling us, but whether we are listening. And for the reflection. What is God calling you to now? What is God asking of you? It may be to something that your church needs to do, or it might be to something outside of the church that your community desperately needs. Open your ears and listen to God's call on your life. The Holocaust survivor Victor Franke wrote, It does not really matter what we expect from life, but rather what life expects from us. What does life, what does God expect of you?